Okay, everyone. What's up? Goldie here. Um, I'm going to be going over uh, week 14 here in the NFL. Hopefully, I can try and cut this damn thing down. <laughs> uh, I have recorded um, you know, a couple of different things today. I've just been yapping um, a little bit too much. So I'm going to try and keep this once again to about an hour. Um, I mean, shit, watch it on one and a half X speed or something like, uh, try and get through all of my nonsense here. Um, so anyway, let's get into it. Uh, once again, I think it's, uh, pretty, um, prudent to mention that we are early week. Okay. It is only Wednesday here. Uh, and early week ownership projections are very noisy. Um, and until we get later into the week and we have, uh, all of the injury stuff sort of fleshed out as well, um, we do see a little bit of the noise reflected in the actual projections too. Um, and sometimes that does significantly affect how we want to approach a game. Um, this week, we we mostly know pretty much everything, I think. Uh, but there's always some sort of kind of bombshell later in the week. Uh, we just got to be on our toes for. Um, as of right now, I mean, you might be able to see right here. Obviously, we still have Lamar in the projections. Um you can obviously ignore that, right? He'll be out. It'll be Tyler Huntley down here. I mean, totally in this Baltimore-Pittsburgh game is like 37. You don't want to be playing this anyway, uh, for the most part. Um, so we're not dealing with a lot of quarterback injuries uh, like we have in the last couple of weeks uh, or quarterback questions. Um, we're mostly pretty solidified. It's just a, a couple of skill position players that are um, questionable uh, or you know could be doubtful or, or – you know, whatever they are going into the weekend that we'll have to be aware of. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, this week, you know, compared to the last couple of weeks, um, we really only have one one game, actually, uh, above 50 uh, in a total, or projected total. And that's this game here, Minnesota and Detroit sitting at 53 and a half. Um, we like everybody from this game because both defenses are very attackable. And both offenses can really, really score, man. These are two of the best offenses in the league uh, in terms of production and points per game. So we're going to see it from, from all angles here. Um, first of all, we could mostly just avoid the defenses. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of points here, and you're really going to need kind of some outlier defensive performances, obviously, as you, you normally do, to see a defense really get there and really pay off. Um but it's it's much less likely to um, to get there in a super high total game because not not because there's not going to be opportunity. Obviously, these teams are going to throw the football a lot, um, but mostly because they're going to give up so many points that you know you really need like almost two scores sometimes for a defense to get there in one of these types of games. Um, because they're going to give up so many points. So that said, uh, we, we just like the offenses. Justin Jefferson, of course, 9,000. You can obviously play him. Uh, ownership's probably going to steam on all of these guys going into the week. So these are early, early numbers. And as I mentioned, this is the only game above 50. And it's actually 6.5 points higher than the next closest game. So um, this is going to be the obvious spot as soon as uh, most of the, the rest of the industry starts paying attention uh, and looking at NFL for this week. So um, this is going to steam. All of these numbers will, but the projections will probably pump up a little bit as well because this is a really, really good spot for both teams here. So you can play Jefferson, of course. Um, at 20%, he's probably under-owned, to be honest. He's the far far and away the number one in the offense, uh, but you can play both TJ Hawkinson and Adam Thiel. I really like both of these spots as well. Uh, market is coming in at about half the ownership of Jefferson, so you can play either one of them. You can play both of these guys together and fade Jefferson if you want to. Um, I, I think that's probably pretty warranted in some of your Minnesota builds. Uh, if you're getting less than probably 2x the field on Kirk Cousins stacks here, uh, you're probably behind the eight ball, I would guess. Uh, you're probably going to end up, if you're just run vanilla teams right now with early projections, you'd probably end up with like 30% Cousins uh, or higher. I mean, who knows? Um, that said, I mean, you can definitely play Cousins, of course. Uh, we like getting to him, certainly at lower ownership. The ownership's going to steam, but 
Uh, at 6100 I think it's a fine price for Kirk. We don't want to play him at, at in the upper 6,000s. Um, lower 6,000s is, is very gettable, especially against a, uh, a pretty attackable pass defense in the Detroit Lions. And certainly, um, with a very pass-heavy offense, like the Minnesota Vikings, uh, they're they're a full, damn near what is that three to two, um, in in run pass balance sixty full sixty forty split here. So that's a that's a really really strong number. It's I believe the second highest in the league to be honest, um, to Tampa. So that's how we want to attack. Okay, it's the it's the normal culprits here. Uh, Jefferson, Hawk, and Thielen think. That, Adam Thielen here at 4900 is a really really good price. Uh, like this play a lot in tournaments. Same with KJ Osborne. Don't forget about him uh, at 3500. Think this is a tournament dart that you can mix into your pools as well. Uh, Dalvin Cook, however, I talked about him last week, getting him at I believe the lowest price we've had him in like four seasons at 7200. Got a price bump, but I mean it's not commensurate with the fundamental spot change here. Um, this is a fantastic spot because Detroit's actually far far worse. Uh, against the rush than they are against the pass. So if the Vikings are looking for the most exploitable spot here, um, you know, they would pivot to their running game, and they would use Dalvin, and they would use Alexander Madison uh, quite a bit more heavily because Detroit is um, about 600% below average, 500% below average, uh, in, in rush defense, they give up 150 yards a game and f over five yards a carry. So, uh, and one and a half scores on the ground per game. So, very, very attackable spot for Dalvin Cook. 7,300, um, this ownership is way, way, way too low. Uh, this will probably come in at, I would guess, 15 to 18% by the end of the week, uh, which is probably still too low, to be honest. This is a really, really good spot um, for the Vikings pretty much all over. Uh, but don't forget about some of the cheaper tournament darts, uh, like a KJ Osborne in particular. Uh, Detroit on the other side, um, you know, if if we're looking for spots to get different and spots to pivot in super chalky games, well, just pivot to the other side, right? Look at 5,600 golf here with uh, probably the most um, popular wide receiver on the week at Almond Ross St. Brown. This ownership's going to be 30% by the end of the week. But, you know, did everybody else is been basically completely ignored. Now, the ownership will steam on Goff a little bit as well, um, but, you know, that said, like, we know where the football's going with him. Uh, they did activate Jamison Williams, I believe, last week. So they have him and DJ Chark. Uh, the Khalif Raymond sort of experiment is over at 3,300. I, I mean, he would have been a pretty decent deep tournament dart um i suppose he still could be but a very very like you can get 3x the field here and only play one team <laughs> or something you know what i mean so um not a lot of exposure that we want to get to these tertiary quaternary pieces of the detroit lions passing game you know what is interesting however we do need to note deandre swift came back last week and he played over 50 percent of the snaps um he got most of the running back work and that would suggest that uh, he's back healthy again, which is excellent because he's only 5,800, which is a killer price for him. And also, we're getting a sort of interesting little price inversion here between the number one and the number two running back in Jamal Williams at 5,900. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit with the, the Chargers in particular. I think this is a very exploitable spot that um, is overlooked by the market. And certainly, snap counts are not really... Uh, heated very well. Certainly, it, it's more so just results. It's like, hey, DeAndre Swift got X number of carries and, and X number of targets or, or whatever out of the backfield. Those are the, you know, when, when people click on the name in, in DraftKings, for example, um, and they look at volume, those are the numbers that they see. They don't see snap count. So um, it could be a little bit hidden here that DeAndre Swift uh, actually did come back, and he played a full complement of snaps. I mean, not full, but a very large complement of snaps compared to his earlier season work when he was dealing with the ankle and whatever else he was dealing with. So that means Jamal Williams has been relegated back to the number two in a 5,900 that makes him um, pretty much unplayable if Swift is going to get 60% of the snaps or whatever that you could project uh, going into this week. So I think this is a really, really strong play here. 
uh, at 5,800 for DeAndre Swift. Very low ownership. Probably not going to see all that much steam unless the rest of the industry um, sort of picks up on this uh, as, as we get toward the end of the week. But would be shocked if he comes in over 12%. Uh, so I think that's a really, really good play. I'd get probably double that if I were to run teams right now, um, even though the projection is a little bit low with some lower value metrics. I'd probably force this and this is a really, really good spot because the Vikings run defense, while it shows positive expectation in general, they're about break even um, relative to the league average. So yeah, it's not like it's a super avoidable spot. They give up, you know, 110 yards on the ground a game. Um, but once again, there's a lot of upside for DeAndre Swift in the passing game. So there's touchdown equity here. And once again, we're, we're expecting points. So I think this is a really, really good play. Um, DJ Chark, you could play as a tournament dart as well as a piece to mix into your Goff Amon Ra stacks. Don't fade Amon Ra. Uh, even if the ownership comes in high, um, the, the target share and the, and the volume is just, it's just way too high for him. But as you can see here with Goff, um, you know, don't, don't fade him as well. Get pieces of Goff, even though there's variance with Goff this is a really good price and point per dollar and value metrics wise, he projects, uh, incredibly. Um, so once again, I, I mean, not touching the, the lines of defense. I mean, they're about 8,000 overpriced here. They're, they're so bad. So, um, that's that game. We're going to have to get different with it, but, um, you know, this, this is the sort of purple and, and sky blue elephant in the room this week. Uh, you're going to have to get this game right, uh, in order to win tournaments, I believe, because there's going to be points. These defenses aren't good enough. Uh, to just stifle everybody, so uh, you're going to have to um, play it, play it in bunches, and and play it a bunch of different ways. Uh, okay, moving on, Jets and Buffalo. Jets won the first meeting, um, and that that was in um, the Meadowlands, however, and this one's up in uh, Orchard Park in Buffalo. Um, who knows what we got got to deal with, you know, weather-wise uh, with this game. Um, we are seeing a total slightly above 40 i believe uh yeah it is 44 so it's maybe some sneaky points here in this game i mean jets offense they're actually pass heavy uh despite the fact that they claim that they want to run the football um sala has been allowing mike white over here to throw the football to garrett wilson they've been a pretty damn good combination the last couple weeks um, I think Garrett Wilson, for his role in the offense in the passing game, is still underpriced. Now, we do have to keep in mind that he was 4,300 two weeks ago, okay? So we're 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 buying into a $1,600 price bump uh, on a pretty volatile position. Now, that said, I, I, I do think he's still underpriced. He should probably be 6,800, I would guess, um, if I had to put a figure on it for his role in the offense. So there's still some value that we can squeeze out here. And Buffalo's defense, while good, is vulnerable. Um, they are a good unit, but you know, they're slightly above break even relative to league average uh, in pass supp suppression metrics. Um, and same thing on the ground. I mean, they're, they're much better on the ground than they are against the pass, but uh, still vulnerable in that regard. I mean, frankly, the best defense in this game is the Jets, and it's not Buffalo. Um, so it looks a little suspicious that Buffalo's laying a huge number here at 9.5 and, and 10 across betting markets. Uh, I made it significantly tighter than that because I think the Jets are live. They're absolutely live to cover a big number in this game. Um, and as we saw in the earlier meeting, they're, they're live to win a game outright. Um, it's not crazy. So if they are to you know, win a game outright. Who's it going to be? Well, it, it'll be Garrett Wilson and Mike White. You can play Mike White uh, at 5,500. This is still fine. He's projecting okay. There's a, there's guys down here at this um, at this price level that are I'd probably rather get to. But you know, this is one of the few totals of the week uh, in the mid 40s. And if we want to pivot off of this game up top and the Cincinnati Cleveland game here. Uh, and maybe even the Philly Giants game. You know, where's the next game that we could? Well, I mean, this is. Total-wise, I mean, we can get to the Jets. Uh, it's not the worst play in the world. Um, if we're playing some Mike White stacks, it's probably going to be sparing stacks, of course. But you can mix in some Corey Davis 4,200. Don't think this is terrible. Uh, you will have maybe some volume concerns, uh, similar 
to Tyler Conklin, just some volume concerns. But if you're playing stacks, I think it's okay to mix it in those guys. Not in, you know, outsized proportions. You don't need any more than 6 8% to get to get leverage on the field here. If you get a full 10% of one of these guys, I'd probably um, start to hit the brakes a little bit. But uh, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, Bam Knight here at 5,100. He popped last week. Uh, don't really want to attack with a you know, an, an offense like the Jets that really are actually throwing the football at a 57-43 clip um, compared to their you know to the, the their rush game. Um, so 5100, however, I, I do think there is a little bit of upside that isn't priced in here. And if we're expecting some points, I think you can play uh, a little bit of Bam Knight in some tournament builds. Um, that said, I don't really want the Jets in general, um, you know, against good offenses. But at 2500, like Josh Allen turns the football over, man. Like guy has thrown 11 interceptions this season, and that is tied or leading the league in in inter- in flat out interceptions. But like this offense will turn the football over, and the Bills themselves, they have a a dead even turnover margin, right? They are break even. That's usually not what you see with Super Bowl type teams. Um, you know, that said, the Jets on the other side also have a, a turnover margin at dead break even. So I think this game is a hell of a lot closer than nine and a half in the betting markets. Um, and, you know, I'm not running into the window to bet Mike White here, but I mean, 10, 10 points, a lot of points in the NFL. Um, okay. So Buffalo on the other side, you can get to Josh Allen. Of course, he always projects well because of the rushing upside and if they are to blow out the Jets here, you know it's a large part going to be due to him, right? So uh, you can certainly play him. Uh, I would be careful though with some Steph Diggs. Um, we are seeing a little bit here. Obviously, the projection is a full five-point difference here, but see how that reflects at the exact same price tag, um, because the value metrics and point per dollar metrics they don't take into account who's who over here, right? They just look at projection and and calculate the metrics. Um, so look at how that reflects with a just a full five points. 20 points is still a good number, still a good projection, right? We know the upside for Steph Diggs is well in the 40s. Um, but the aggregate projection is where these are calculated from. And look at how, like, look at the delta here, 60 to 40. Uh, that, that's a big, big price delta or value delta when the prices are the exact same. Right, so we have to be wary of that because the Jets' defense, as I mentioned, they're the best unit on the field over here. It's not the offenses; it's it's the Jets' defense, and it's uh, pretty. It's not really close, to be quite honest. Um, so that said, it's 16, 17, 18 percent ownership wherever Diggs comes in. That could very well be a fadeable, uh, a, a fadeable spot. Uh, keep that in mind. You, I mean, you can get Diggs every single week, but um, getting over the field here in this spot, it I would kind of balk at that a little bit. That said, I would, if we are projecting points here, I'd like to get to Gabe Davis instead, and maybe some Isaiah McKenzie as well as deeper tournament darts. I think the upside is, um, I mean, it's not, it's similar to Steph Diggs, uh, not quite as high. Uh, obviously, the floor is far, far lower than Steph Diggs, of course, but um, 5300 this is like you're also saving three thousand dollars here and the difference in projection and and value is is not nearly as stark uh between Diggs and davis as it is between josh allen and steph Diggs, right um so something to kind of keep in mind when we're when we're sort of dissecting some projections and, and value and ownership figures uh as you start building your teams. Devin Singletary, 5,700. 5, I think he's fully unplayable at this price. Jets are really good run defense. And James Cook at 46, I think he would be playable um, because he may very well be the number one rushing back in this offense. I mean, talent-wise, I think he probably is. Um, and it's not really just a, a pure rushing back. He can catch the ball out of the backfield, did it in college just fine. But like I said, the the run defense here for the Jets is is just excellent, and he's probably not going to get enough volume in a passing game to make 
um, make punting this worth it. But 4600 is a pretty damn good price. I think the projection is probably a bit low for him. Um, but it once again, it's because he's in a timeshare. Naeem Hines is also going to get snaps. So you got to be aware of that as well. Uh, Dawson Knox, 3800 We've been waiting for him all, all season, and it, it just hasn't materialized. Um, so kind of takes me off. But in a what I project to be a, a tighter game than than a 10 point spread here, Dawson Knox could definitely play a role. So if you're getting to some build, I mean, you can mix them into your player pool. It's OK, I think. But uh, do just generally have volume concerns. Um, Bill's defense, 4000. Yikes, man. This is uh, I think they're too expensive here and not because the Jets offense is all that potent necessarily. They're 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 not. But. Um, I think the Jets could win the game, and you're going to need the Bills at this price tag to probably turn the Jets over, and and get a probably a defensive score. Um, so like we're like Jets, however, are only giving up about two sacks a game. So there there's really not a lot of sack upside, um, and you know they, they only turn the ball over once a game. You know there there's some interception upside for sure, but. Um, you know, it's not significant and not my favorite play here for the Bills. I think this is kind of a, a trap play at this price tag. Uh, okay, moving on, Philly and the Giants. Uh, Philly won everything last week. Uh, as I sort of maybe suggested that they could be a, 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 per, a hidden stack. Um, and, you know, sure enough, A.J. Brown uh, got to Tennessee and he got to him in a big way. Um, Jalen Hurts this week, I think, is... I don't want to say a more viable play, uh, but it may be more viable, right? Um, it, how we get there with Jalen Hurts is is really capitalizing on the rushing upside. Like, last week, he obviously threw for a boatload, didn't need the rushing upside. This week, I think he's going to be able to capitalize on the significant deficiency over here for the Giants in the run defense. So... Um, Philly also runs a hell of a lot of run pass option here, and Jalen Hurst just tucks the football as we saw against the Packers. Uh, it, like he put up what 150 yards and 125 yards in the first half um, against a bad rush defense. He can absolutely get there with his legs, and he doesn't need a whole hell of a lot of work in the passing game uh, to really make this number pay off. So I think at 8100 and you know decent like kind of stout ownership here really across the board for the Eagles. Um, I think this is okay to get to. It, it makes it more difficult to get to A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith than, than it was last week. I still think they're overpriced in general for their uh, roles in the offense because they still have Sanders uh, and they still have, you know, obviously Jalen Hurst that runs a shitload. So um, this week I'd prefer to stay off of A.J. Brown and, and Devontae Smith and rather get to Jalen Hurts and Miles Sanders in the running game. I think the upside is... Uh, is a little bit more consistent um, in uh, in realization. Um, Quez Watkins, you could probably consider him as deep tournament darts. You know, it's not to say that uh, we don't want we want to like avoid the Giants um, through the air because they're 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 break even defense through the air. Uh, I like Philly in this game. They're laying uh, just about seven. I made the game a little higher, uh, so I do like Philly. Uh, but I, th I do think the Giants could compete a little bit as well. Um, so in that event, like I, I, I mean, I, I think we could see some some points in this game. And this is one of the sort of middling totals, sitting 45 and a half um, off the opener. That I think there are exploitable spots in this game where we could see. Uh, you know, the Eagles and the Giants blow through that total. So um, Quez Watkins could contribute to something like that at 3,800. I think he's overpriced. Um, would like him down at the 32, 3,300 range, I think. Uh, but as a deep tournament dart, if you're getting more exposure to this game as pivots off of the Minnesota, Detroit, and Cleveland, Cincinnati games, then I think these are this is one of the deeper tournament darts that you could get to. Uh, favorite way to play this, however, like I said, is the rushing game. Um... I would probably not chase the A.J. Brown with a lot of exposure, and I would prefer to get to Devontae Smith um, if I am playing the passing game. Uh, but both of them are, are, of course, perfectly playable. Jack Stoll got a target last week. Uh, let's all do backflips for that. But he 
even at 2,800, I mean, you just can't play the guy. Kenneth Gainwell, this projection looks super, super low for him because he actually gets real work. And this is a legitimate spot for the Eagles' run game against Giants because, you know, as I've mentioned ad nauseum here, they are uh, very, very attackable on the ground. Um, you know, they give up 140 yards a game. Now, touchdown equity-wise, uh, they only give up one score a game to the running backs. So... Maybe the upside is a little bit sapped there. So if we're targeting points, uh, you know, make sure to include Jalen Hurts in those stacks with Miles Sanders. Favorite way to play it would be a Hurts-Sanders mixed in with a Smith. Um, something like that. But I think we can also play the other side of this game uh, with the Giants here. And not to say my favorite quarterback in the game would be Daniel Jones, but, I mean, he's my – like, he's priced – at, at a much better level, right? I'd much rather spend 5400 than 8000 um, on Dimes. And Dimes has, I don't want to say similar rushing upside, but he's got a similar, similar rushing workload to Jalen Hurts on the other side. Um, that's how the Giants want to run this offense. And don't forget that uh, Brian Dable, head coach of the Giants, he was calling plays for the Bills. And that's how he ran the offense with Josh Allen over there. So he's trying to use Daniel Jones a little bit, well, similarly to how he used Josh Allen. Um, of course, Dimes is not Josh Allen, right? Certainly not um, really. I mean, he's like a poor man's Josh Allen, I suppose. But he runs the ball a hell of a lot here. And at 5,400, you can play him naked. He always projects well because of that rushing upside. So uh, the Giants offense here, Passing game-wise, we can't really get to Slayton, Hodgins, James, really or Bellinger with any degrees of confidence. But you can play them in stacks if you are mixing them in. Uh, obviously, it's Saquon. They want to run it through him. You know, he'll get 25, 30 touches in this game, especially if the game is, uh, you know, sort of faster paced. And I, I think it could be. Uh, we could very well see some, like there are some routes here that both the Giants and and Philly score. Uh, a little bit. Um, so in that event, you can play Saquon, of course. Don't fade Saquon. Uh, and at 15%, I think the ownership is probably a little bit low. And there could be some hidden value, even on a an, an expensive uh, running back here at, uh, at 8,000. So uh, favorite way to play this from the Giants would have to be with Dime Saquon. And if I got to add in a third piece, since it's kind of weird to run a quarterback running back stack, um, it would probably be Bellinger. Uh, you can also play Darius Slayton. I'm not wild about the price tag, though, to be quite honest. Um, I think all of these guys in the receiving core are basically the exact same play, to be quite honest. Um, and the point per dollar and value metrics really suggest the same. So do the ownership metrics. So the, the market kind of agrees with that. Uh, Giants defense, 2,400. I'm not touching them against Philly. And that's pretty much it. Um, once again, you know, I... I I think you can play dimes. You can play them naked if you want to. Um, okay, moving on. Cleveland and Cincinnati. This is the second highest total of the week at 47. Uh, let's try and get through this quickly. I know we're spending a lot of time here on the first few games, but this is really where all the points are going to be scored. Um, so Deshaun Watson, he was terrible last week. Uh, we can't expect him to be that terrible going forward. Uh, it really, it was mostly the fault of the um, Cleveland offensive coaching staff that they didn't give Nick Chubb enough work or as much work as they should have, and they gave more to Kareem Hunt. Um, I don't really expect that to persist. They really want to be balanced. Uh, however, with Deshaun Watson, he's a much better passing quarterback than Jacoby Brissett. So going forward, they'll probably want to see and try to squeeze in a bit more um, uh, passing sort of heavy scripts. Um, in the in the offensive game plan, as Deshaun gets a, a little bit more comfortable, but you know, no doubt, like at 6,500, clearly given the results, he was overpriced and did, like he was dreadful last week. He looked so so bad. So, um, I think this is an attackable spot against Cincy. I mean, Cincy's a good team over here, man. This is probably the second best team in the AFC. Um, I think they're better than Buffalo, to be quite honest. Uh, I, they may even be better than Kansas City. I, I think they might be. Um, they're a really, really good team over here. Um, and I don't generally like to attack really good teams. However, 
the Bengals can score, and their defense probably still leaves a little bit on the table. Um, so we can get to some Deshaun if you want to. It's not my favorite play. Uh, Amari also not my favorite play, but he's playable. 6200 is an okay price for him. DPJ, we've been playing in cash. You can play him again. It's okay. I'd probably rather get to Zay Jones in the next game at 4700 who we'll talk about in a sec. Um, David Njoku practiced this week. Who knows if he's going to be healthy? Uh, practiced uh, today being Wednesday, um, but who knows if he's going to be healthy this week. Uh, like, the guy's just super tilting. Um, if he plays, sure, you can mix him into the player pool. Um, almost rather just play Dawson Knox and, and and roll the dice. I mean, they, they look like the exact same type of play to me. Um, Kareem Hunt, yeah, I mean, this is a good price tag for him, and if he does end up getting more work than Nick Chubb, it makes Nick Chubb at this price tag fully unplayable. But you know, and and at 4,600 for Kareem Hunt, um, if he gets passing work and a little bit more rushing work, then that makes him interesting. I want to see more out of the Cleveland offense before I start making uh, some real uh, significant decisions with them. Uh, they they look so so bad that I don't know if they're going to be able to fix it in one week. And like I said, against a, a good team in the Cincinnati Bengals, I don't really want to target them. So. Um, that said, if we are targeting points, and you know the market is expecting some points here, um, I, I think the total may be a little bit high, suggesting, or you know, given the, uh, you know, how bad the Browns' offense was last week. But shit, I mean, like Cincinnati could put up 35 points on the Browns here uh, pretty easily, I think. Uh, and we're seeing Joe Burrow lead the quarterback room in. Um, not in not in raw projection, but definitely in point per dollar and value score this week. So really, really good spot for Burrow. Uh, we can attack the Cleveland defense pretty much every which way and any which way. Uh, Joe Mixon uh, did practice in full on Wednesday. Not sure if he's going to be back in full. Uh, Got to be aware of that. If he's out again, it's obviously the Pirine show. Um, even if he plays, I think you could probably stay off of uh, full shares of either one of the two. Maybe mix in either one of the two uh, in your tournament builds uh, at some lower exposures, maybe 5 8%, something like that. You know, just kind of get with the field. Uh, see how Mixon progresses throughout the week, however. As um, as we see here, high standard deviation so far, so market not really sure what's going to go on. Tyler Boyd really like this still at 5,000, um, despite the fact that he is, is dropping touchdown passes uh, in the end zone. Um, we talked a little bit about it last week the sort of price discrepancy between Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. I think it's not quite where it should be, given uh, Jamar Chase's sort of alpha role in the offense. Uh, but Tyler Boyd, he plays everything out of the slot, right? So it's going to be him at 5000 Now, I think, like, he got a price drop. I think he's a pretty damn good play still um, in the event that we target points. So I think Burrow, Tyler Boyd with a Chase, uh, is a pretty damn good stack. You can run it back with Amari. You can run it back with DPJ if you'd like. Uh, don't think that's bad at all. Uh, preferred stack would be Burrow, Chase, Tyler Boyd, and then run it back with Amari. Um, not stoked about getting to the tight end room here. Um, they just have never used the tight end enough. So we're not going to mess around with that. Um just really have to keep an eye on the running back news for the Bengals. Um, if you want to play the Bengals defense, 3,500, probably overpriced, but uh, we saw how bad Cleveland's offense was last week, and sure, I mean, it's fine. Uh, okay, Jacksonville, Tennessee. Um, Jacksonville got blown to shreds last week by Detroit somehow. Um, we should probably expect a bounce, I think. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, 5,700, he's okay. And uh, bad, Jacksonville's pass offense starting to come around a little bit. I think Trev is starting to figure it out. Um, but they still have Doug Peterson down there who is, uh, I mean, he really doesn't ha give his offenses a, a hell of a lot of upside. Um, so, you know, what does that really mean? I mean, obviously last week he didn't give the freaking football to Travis Etienne. He was on the field. He was perfectly healthy, but he didn't give the ball. Um, to his number one running back, and that was super tilting as well uh, because, obviously, I touted him last week. Like, I thought he was the best play of the week. I still think he – like, I would play it literally every single time. Um, I just don't think it worked out. I This week, 
I'm less enthused about the spot because Tennessee's rush defense is fantastic. Um, that said, ETN still catches the ball out of the backfield, and he that makes him a little bit more playable. Probably makes him a little bit expensive in this particular matchup because the total in this game sitting about 41, 41 and a half right now, uh, with Tennessee laying three and a half. So um, I made the number a little bit higher to Tennessee. Uh, I think they are. This is one of the teams. Um, you know, I, I do think Jacksonville is kind of sneaky okay, but I think Tennessee is probably still significantly better. I think it's a bad matchup for them. Um, Jacksonville in general has, you know, they do well beating up on, on bad teams and competing with bad teams, but they have a significant vulnerability, not just in a pass game, but uh, on the ground. And it, that's why Derrick Henry is going to pop so hard on the other side this week. So how would I like to play this game? Well, it would probably be Derrick Henry as the run back and then play Trev, Etienne, and Zay Jones, as I alluded to in the last game. 4700 really like this price for him. You can play him in cash. Um, he's getting enough volume. Certainly this week you could play him in cash because Tennessee's pass defense, we saw what Philly did to them last week, uh, they could get obliterated. Um, and... You know, really, it's going to be kind of difficult to project a lot of points, however. Um, so I'm not super crazy about getting to Jacksonville stacks. You can play Christian Kirk. I think he's overpriced. But uh, if you do play stacks, it, it, it would be, um, my, you know, my favorite would be Zay Jones, then Kirk, uh, outside of the ETN sort of stone lock in stacks. Um, Evan Ingram, he got a little bit of work, but that was just kind of blowout work. Uh, just not super interested. Jags at 27 uh, against what's likely to be a uh, pretty limited Tennessee offense over here. Um, you know, they, they're likely to be without Traylon Burks. It's, it's a damn shame, man. Kid's so, so good and uh, really did not want to see him leave, obviously because I had a boatload last week. But I never want to see anybody um, get hurt or, you know, certainly not concussed. So if he is out this week, um, I mean, he did get up pretty quickly and, and walk off the field. But, uh, you know, who knows? He's still got a clear protocol. If he's out, it's the, um, I suppose, it's the Robert Woods, Nick Westbrook, Akine, and Austin Hooper show. Um, would prefer just playing Austin Hooper as a one-off at 2,900. You can also play him in stacks. Pretty damn good play down here. I think this is a good spot for him. Uh, as I said, the Jags are attackable in the passing game. So if you want to run a skinny 5,200 Austin Hooper, uh, 2,900 with um, with Tannehill, I think that's a, a pretty cheap stack and, and a good kind of contrarian exposure stack. Run it back with Zay Jones if you want. Uh, that's not exposing yourself too much to a, a pretty low total game, which is likely to favor Derrick Henry uh, quite heavily um, in – in the, uh, I guess, exposure and, and, and workload shares. Uh, at 7,900, uh, he's obviously perfectly fine. Probably going to lead the way in in ownership this week at uh, north of 20%. I think it's okay. But if you want to get a little bit different, uh, I, I'm not necessarily fading Derrick Henry, but if you want to get off of that a little bit and play the game um, a little bit different, you can play a Tannehill and an Austin Hooper. Probably just stay off of the Westbrook Akine and the Robert Wood stacks. If Traylon Burks is back, uh, I really, really like that. I would play Tannehill uh, with Derrick Henry and Traylon Burks in that event, and then I'd mix in Austin Hooper. That would push me over the top to um, play a, a pretty good portion of, of Tennessee's Tennessee stacks, I think. Uh, Titans defense, 3,400. Eh, eh, you know, like it's all right. They got a really, really good rush defense, uh, but their pass defense, I have questions. So um, probably not my favorite unit to play this week at 34. Okay, Houston is going to likely get blown out this week. Um, they're catching 17 against Dallas. I'm not all that enthused about laying 17 points, but I think, that, you know, I made it 16. It, it's just like whatever. Uh you know, you normally don't make money laying uh, a touch or two and a half touchdowns in the NFL, but damn, it's going to be really hard to not lay this number this week. I think um, the Houston is just dreadful. Damian Pierce, I'm not touching at six thousand. Dallas defense is fantastic. Um, Kyle Allen, I'm also not touching. He was awful last week. Probably see a bounce out of him, but I mean, he's not going to bounce very high. So Nico Collins, he caught a garbage touchdown, um, which is great if you played him. Not great if you didn't because he was chalky. Um, 
I think he's still playable. You could play him in cash as well uh, because they're, by all accounts, going to be trailing in this game, and Nico should still get a lot of work because it looks like Brandon Cooks is going to be out. Um, if Cooks plays, eh, whatever. You could play him a little bit as well, uh, but it's very minimal exposures. I really don't, for the most part, don't want anything to do with the Houston offense here. Uh, Texans defense, uh, they'd have to be free, I think, to, to play them in this spot. Um, Dallas on the other side, uh, you can play some Dak if you want. 6,500 is not bad. It's an okay way to get a little bit contrarian here. Um, as we see, C.D. Lamb, Tony Pollard, Zeke all garnering a little bit of ownership. Uh, of course, the the elephant in the um, in the Cowboy room here is is the defense. Like 3,800 coming in early projection runs 21%. This is egregious for tournament like tournament plays you cannot play a defense when they're this chalky they're probably going to steam too so is it, you're going to see 25 percent in a lot of spots um is that it's absolutely your cash defense you can fade them though pretty much everywhere else and you could feel okay with it um they might blow blow out houston here but and and houston could very well turn the ball over another three times for three more scores like dallas is a very very good unit so the the projection is warranted the ownership is probably warranted uh it's very clearly the best spot but um game theory wise this is something you definitely want to avoid in tournaments i wouldn't fade them uh or fully fade them but i would cap my ownership i mean we talk about this every week there's just too much variance with how defense is scored in dfs to be eating 20 percent on a on a defense you just can't do it um Pivot, it's one of the easiest ways to get contrarian in NFL or in football is to just play an unknown defense because there's so much variance. Um, that said, play them in cash. Don't fade them in cash. Uh, just eat it because they're probably going to be 60% owned in cash. Um, and if they do get there, then uh, like you're going to need it, of course. So you can play everybody on the offense. I struggle a little bit um, choosing who because... Houston's so bad here that they're probably going to give it up you know, pretty significantly to everybody. Um, the Cowboys are favorites at pretty much every position here. So if you want to play Dak, I mean, yikes. Um, you could play him with CD at 7,500. I mean, he's kind of garnering a lot of ownership here, really, for my taste. Um, but who knows? Like, the, the Cowboys could come out, and, and they could put this game away literally in the first quarter. Um, and it could be with the passing game. You know, a lot of the ownership is going to go to Pollard and Zeke in the running game. In tournaments, uh, well, in cash, let's start there. At 6,700, I think it's probably Pollard. Um, the efficiency is too high for him. And compared to Zeke, uh, he'll probably, I mean, they're going to split carries. But um, I think you want to be eating the efficiency and eating the ownership on Pollard if you had to choose. But Zeke is healthy, and you could play Zeke in tournaments if you want. If you want to get different with Dallas, play a Zeke, play, play him with Dak, and then play him with CD. That that decreases your ownership um, exposure a little bit, and that's a, a perfectly fine construction and one that could absolutely get there. We saw that uh, the running backs, Pollard, Zeke, and I forget who it was. Maybe it was Davis? Um like they scored four times on the ground last week, like against the Colts, who are a pretty good run de run defense. So uh, this team can get there in a, in a whole bunch of ways. Like Michael Gallup caught two scores, they put up 55 points or whatever it was, and CD only had five catches. You know what I mean? So um, they don't need CD Lamb, which is really what kind of takes me off of him at that ownership. I generally don't like playing very chalky pieces in blowout games like this, or with in games that are likely to be blowouts like this. Um, but that's just kind of my, how I play and my risk tolerance. Um, sometimes it burns me, but a lot of the time, uh, you know, it, I get free tournament entries because 15% of teams are just dead in the water. Um, Dalton Schultz, sure. I mean, yeah, 4,400. It's like, no thanks. You could play him in cash if you want. It's not great. Um, so I'd probably just X him, uh, out of my tournament pool, to be quite honest. Um, I don't want to deal with the variance that comes with a $4,400 tight end. It doesn't get a whole lot of work. Uh, 
Tournament darts, however, don't forget about Noah Brown. He could get there for sure. I mean, Peyton Hendershot could catch a freaking touchdown here, for all I know. Um, like, who the hell knows what they're going to they're gonna do? Because Houston is, is dreadful. Um, so be careful with Dallas. Be careful with the ownerships. But you can definitely get some pieces. There are some ways to get different uh, and get creative with it. Because it's still, a, you know, undoubtedly a, the best spot in the league for, um, for running backs. Uh, okay. So let's uh, try and get quickly through these last few games here. I'm going to try and keep this under an hour. We're going about 45 minutes here. So um, Baltimore and Pittsburgh, uh, as I mentioned at the outset, these projections are going to change because it is going to be Tyler Huntley uh, and super unlikely to be Lamar. Uh, he's got a sprained PCL. If he plays this week, everybody at Baltimore should be fired. Um, but Tyler Huntley's not bad, right? I, I think you could play him at 55. He's, he's okay. I really don't want to attack the Pittsburgh defense in general. They're really good against the pass, and they're really good against the run. So there's not a whole lot of exploitability here for a Baltimore offense that uh, lost its number one weapon, right, and really isn't all that potent to begin with, even with the number one weapon. So um, Tyler Huntley is fine. He will scramble a little bit. He actually drove down the field on Denver defense last, last week and won the game, right? So um, I think it's fine if you want to play a contrarian Huntley and Mark Andrews stack. I probably would stay off of the DeMarcus, would stay off of the Devin Duvernay. I do think there's one interesting sort of correlation play here. If you want to play a Huntley, um, kind of a, you know, a weird Huntley, Devin Duvernay, and a Ravens, that would be, like, really, really goofy. Um but you could also just play Duvernay and the Ravens. It's weird playing a wide receiver and a defense together, but uh, Duvernay, you know, he returns kicks. So um, this could be, in a low-scoring game, a, way, a weird way for the Ravens' defense to actually get there, and you also get a little bit of exposure to the passing game. This is a backup quarterback, and Pittsburgh is obviously going to focus in on Mark Andrews and try stopping him, make sure that they don't beat him, or he doesn't beat them, rather. Um so what Tyler Huntley could very well do, and, and Harbaugh's a very good coach, I think he's probably the best coach in the league now and has overtaken Belichick um, over the last couple of seasons. Now that Belichick is without Tom Brady, and what Be or what Harbaugh could scheme here uh, is some Tyler Huntley to some Devin Duvernay, like mix things up a little bit and and attack the Pittsburgh defense um you know, in, in a little bit of a different manner. So that's one playable route. I'd stay off the running back room. Pittsburgh rush defense just too good, and they're going to be splitting carries here. Um, no, thank you. Pittsburgh on the other side, do kind of, like, I'm still interested in playing Pittsburgh, even though Deontay Johnson can't catch football. Um, George Pickens wants the football, but who knows if if Mike Tomlin uh, is just going to, like, tell him to shut his mouth um, and tell him to eat his vegetables, I guess, uh, instead of shutting his mouth. Um, or if they say, hey, yeah, you got it, kid. We're just, uh, you're exactly right. We're going to give you the football. Um, I, I mean, who knows what's going to happen. In any case, the total in this game is 37, right? So we don't need to be messing around with this in most scenarios. I do still think that Pickett and this offense are very, very close. And Pickett actually said as much in his postgame interview last week. He said that the, he believes the offense is close. Uh, and I am inclined to believe him, much more inclined to believe a rookie quarterback that thinks the offense is close than a veteran quarterback that says, yeah, well, we just need to be better. Um, I'm looking at at Denver and, and Russ Wilson here. So uh, I am inclined to agree with Pickett, and I, I think they're close. Uh, the metrics suggest that they're close, and uh, watching them, it, it's they are trying to figure it out here, and I, I think they are. I think they're very close. Um, that said, there's a good defense over here in Baltimore, and I'm not sure I want to target them, but they are more attackable through the air than they are on the ground. So I would stay off Najee almost completely, pr probably just X him from the pool. Don't want anything to do with this. Uh, this week, and if you want to run a Mark Andrews back, then you can play Pickett with Deontay and Fryermuth, or Pickens and Fryermuth, or you could run a skinny stack with Pickett, since they, you know, once again, you don't want to expose yourself to, um, to aggressively to a uh, a total of 37 here. So Steelers defense 2800, one of the chalkier defenses. You could play this demon cash here. I think it's fine. Um, and they're a thousand cheaper than than Cowboys, so not bad at all. Uh, and that's probably it. I do like Fryermuth uh, once again, 
at 4,500, it's kind of getting a little stiff in 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 price here. But um, you know, it, he's still fine. He's still getting plenty of work. And and if the offense for the Steelers is going to continue to progress, uh, you're going to see a lot of progression out or a lot of work in the in the tight end room. Uh, okay, quickly, let's go over Kansas City and Denver. Uh, Kansas City, I don't really want much to do with Kansas City here. I think Mahomes is probably too expensive this week. This is a very good pass unit over here, pass defense unit um, uh, in Denver. Uh, I do like Travis Kelsey, however. Uh, he's got just fantastic numbers against Denver, and in the NFL, you generally don't want to play that game, but he's got a you know a pretty respectable sample. He plays him twice a year, and in, he's been in the league for eight freaking years. So, um, And he's got very good numbers. They're very consistent. He catches about nine balls for 110, 120 yards a game and a score uh, against Denver. So if you want to play those averages, I think that's fine. And at 7,600, we're kind of starving for a lot of really good plays this week. So you might have to kind of bite your tongue and and play some you know less, uh, I don't want to say suboptimal, but less optimal spots. Um, so 7,600, I think this is fine. I think the ownership is fine. I mean, this is Kelsey. We know that he can score three times and that's really all Mahomes would need to get there um that said I don't want to play the stack it's it's just too expensive I'd rather just go elsewhere uh Isaiah Pacheco I do like at 5700 um I think he's okay I have volume concerns for him in the past game um but Denver is most attackable on the ground and it is with the running back so um he should get some work and Chiefs are still laying 10 here uh I think the number's a little bit high to be quite honest um they're laying nine, as a matter of fact. Uh, I mean, it's a big number, and Denver's defense is very, very good, and these two teams are very familiar uh, with each other. So, you know, that said, the number is so high because Denver's defense is, or offense is just absolutely dreadful. I don't really want to attack with Juju or most of the passing game. That said, Juju's going to run a lot of his work or run a lot of his routes out of the slot, which would push MVS out to uh, the outside and he would then get Pat Sertan, which is not a matchup I want to be messing with. Uh, so in that event, like, you know, fundamental spot agnostic here, I would prefer uh, MVS to Juju um, because of price, right? Uh, but that considered, um, you know, I actually do like Juju a little bit more than I like MVS here. Uh, that I still don't want to attack with Juju, 5600, he's fine. If you land on him, um, he's okay. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be stacking the Chiefs here, unless it's a a Mahomes Kelsey MBS or a Mahomes Kelsey Juju. I mean, that's kind of hard to get to, to be quite honest. Um, Chiefs defense, you can play 3900. We saw that um, expensive defenses can get there against bad offenses for sure. Um, we've really only seen that a couple of times this season. But the problem I have with this play for the Chiefs is, you know, even though Denver's offense is bad, they could very well shut them out, of course, but they don't turn the ball over. And Russ, you know, despite, um, you know, being totally sapped and upside all season, he still only turned the ball over like five, six times or something. Uh, for example, Josh Allen has turned the ball over 10 times um, just through the air. That's not to mention fumbles or anything, right? So it takes me off of the Chiefs defense a little bit here. On the other side, I'd, I'd almost rather just play Freaking Denver defense, 2,300. You know, this is, this is a much better play, even though we're attacking um, or trying to stifle a, a really potent offense over here. I think that, you know, we saw last week, of course, Lamar went out, but they, they held Baltimore to three points that entire game and just lost in the last drive. So uh, this is a really, really good unit. They're still underpriced. Um, I have concerns that Kansas City is going to turn the football over, though, of course. And, you know, sack-wise, um, that's really the only other spot that – we can try and get to with, uh, or when we're, or try to try to exploit rather when we're getting to a defense. Um, but the Chiefs only take you know a sack and a half per game. Good offensive line here, and and Mahomes just doesn't he scrambles a little bit. It's like he just doesn't take a lot of sacks. So um, not a whole lot of upside. There's upside at the price because the unit is good, but scoring upside. I mean it's just like eh kind of whatever. If you land in the Broncos, I mean, it's fine. Um, that said, I'm going to, you know, offensively, I, I will have some Broncos. I'm going to play them every single freaking week, and I'm just paying everybody's rake. Um, so congratulations. Uh, but Russ Wilson at 5,100 with Cortland Sutton out this week. He's got a hamstring. Um, 
Judy can't really catch a football, and it, like it, it's Russell Wilson, it's Greg Dulcich. Like Dulcich is actually getting pretty you know solidified work here, a pretty regular target share. Uh, I think the market is quite correct at this price tag um, to be pushing him up to about 10, 12 percent. Um, Kendall Hinton will get a little bit more work now that uh, Sutton is out, so uh, it's it's reasonable to consider that if Kansas City is is going to score at Denver, they're going to have to throw the ball, but who freaking knows if it, if they can get off the field, if they can complete anything. Uh, I mean, who knows? They're just they're just awful. I'm going to have some, um, but I, I don't recommend it, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, favorite play in the game. I mean, I'm not touching Lat Murray because you've got also Mike Boone and Marlon Mack that are, you know, going to get snaps as well. Um, so favorite play in the game is Dulcich at 34, followed by Russ, followed by the Broncos. They're, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Just don't play anybody here. It's just bad. <laughs> uh, okay, Tampa and San Francisco. We could get through this one quickly as well. I don't want anything to do with the Tampa offense here. I don't think they're very good, despite the fact that they're very pass-heavy. Um, and and they won that game against the Saints. They had no business winning that game against the Saints. Saints blew that game. So um, what do I want to do with this? Well, I mean, they throw the ball a crap load. Um, 5600 for Tom Brady's pretty damn good price. But this is an excellent unit over here against San Francisco. I'm not I'm not dealing with this. Their pass defense is, is great. Their run defense is even better. And Tampa can't run the football. They haven't been able to all year. They'll be able to a little bit more in the future with Rashad White's emergence here um, and Leonard Fournette being relegated, I think, a a bit more to a third down and pass catching role. And Rashad White, I mean, Rashad White was on the field for that final drive. So they'll use him out of the backfield as well. Makes it. So we're seeing kind of a a one versus two price inversion here as well, kind of hidden but I think Rashad White is the number one uh, in in the offense going forward. It's not going to be Fournette. Um, you could play you could play a four thousand dollar Julio Jones tournament dart. You could play him. Uh, I don't want to stack the Bucks here at all. I don't want to play Godwin at sixty one. Really, or Mike Evans at sixty four. He's been bad. Um, I don't think the upside is there. But Julio Jones, they will take shots with him because by most accounts, they're going to be trailing in this game even against Brock Purdy on the other side. So they'll they'll take shots with Julio. Uh, don't want the Bucks defense, but you could consider them. They're still a pretty good unit. 2,900 is not bad. Um, and they do get a backup quarterback, right, in, in San Francisco and Brock Purdy over here. So um, really don't want much of the offense here either. Like I said, Tampa's defense is pretty damn good. So I don't want to pay for 8,500 CMC here. I don't think the, the rushing upside is there. Um, even though he gets most of his work in a passing game, I don't think there's going to be a hell of a lot of need for, um, you know, an outsized amount of passing volume to CMC. So I think it's going to be a pretty boring game. Total is sitting, what, 37 in this game as well. So similar to the Baltimore-Pittsburgh game, you don't really want to be touching this uh, in most scenarios. Debo at 61, you can play him as, as a one-off. It's fine. Um, 58 for Brandon Ayuk, probably not. George Kittle, though, 4,300. Sign me up. Uh, with a, a backup quarterback against a pretty good defense, uh, I generally like targeting the tight end there. And uh, 40 is an excellent price. Like, So give me, give me some George Kittle. I think he's a really, really good play here. Um, even if it doesn't get there, I, I'm still – every single week, I don't care who it is uh, and who's – and who the quarterback is. I'm still playing George Kittle at 43. Uh, 49ers defense, you can definitely play them. This is a fantastic unit over here. And uh, we saw that the, the Bucks offense could just be terrible, even against a pretty bad team um, in the Saints. So I think that's fine to, to get to a 3,200. They're, they're projecting very, very well point per dollar and over 20 in value. So I think this is a sneaky good play here for the 49ers. Uh, outside of that, um, you know, probably not much exposure, just kind of some singleton pieces there. Uh, all right, let's get to Carolina and Seattle. I think this is one of the few games that, you know, outside of the, the early couple that we could target. Um, quickly, yeah, we're right at an hour here. I'll try to wrap it up fast. Um, I don't really want to play Sam Darnold, you know, but 
like I said, I'm playing Russ Wilson, so, uh, you know, go ahead. Um, 5,200, it, it's okay. It, Seattle's pass defense is pretty bad. Uh, you can get them on the ground, though, too. So I think DJ Moore and Deontay Foreman are both really damn good plays. Market kind of agrees on the Deontay Foreman so far, 5,400. Price tags are really, really good on these guys. Um, but we've been waiting for DJ Moore really all season, and we've taken the last several weeks off because Carolina's pretty bad. Um, their, their offense is just pretty pitiful, but Darnold will get back there and he'll throw the ball a little bit. Uh, and Seattle's defense really isn't going to beat you. So there's some upside here for DJ Moore. Uh, Terrace Marshall, Marshall Jr. is also in play now. Uh, this kid's a hell of an athlete as well at 3,600. I think this is an okay, deeper tournament dart, uh, sort of punt. Um, you play him in stacks if you, if you end up landing on Sam Darnold somehow. Uh, Visca, same sort of deal at 3,300. I don't, I don't really want to target him uh, or go out of my way to target him, but at 33, I think this is a fine tournament play. You know, he's similar to Terrace Marshall here. Um, Chuba Hubbard, we got to keep an eye on Deontay Foreman. He actually didn't practice on Wednesday. By all accounts, his foot is fine. That's what he's dealing with. Uh, I think they're just trying to keep him healthy and just sort of limit his reps going forward this week, but if he ends up being out, um, you know, it's Chuba Hubbard season. I think this is a fantastic spot at 4,800 that you can really get to him. Nobody's going to play him. This this ownership, even if Deontay Foreman's out, not all of this ownership is going to filter down to Chuba, Chuba Hubbard. Uh, yeah, I mean, it may. You know, you may see it 8%, something like that. But, um, I mean, if he, if he cracks 10%, I'd be pretty surprised, to be quite honest. Uh, there's, there's just other running backs that we could play. Um, so I think this is a pretty damn good spot. Uh, the projection would adjust in that in that event. Uh, Panthers defense 2,200 killer point per dollar play here, similar to San Francisco in the last game, and they're a thousand cheaper. Uh, I think it's a pretty good play as well. I made the game th- right at three and a half, right in line with the market, um, because I think Carolina is actually live here, and I you know if I could get a, a four and a half or a four or a four and a half on Carolina, I think I might bet that. Um, you know, despite the fact that Carolina's offense is bad, I just don't respect Seattle's defense at all. And in that event, I I think Carolina could be competitive. So what can we do? Um, well, you're staying off the tight end room, right? It's just going to be the DJ Moore, Deontay Form, and Terrace Marshall type of show. Maybe a Chuba Hubbard. What can we do with Seattle on the other side? Well, you can play Geno. I mean, guys, guys won slates, right? You can play DK and you can play Tyler. Um, like it, it, it's perfectly fine to get to these guys. We got to see what they're going to do with Kenneth Walker. Um, you know, standard deviation wise, some noise coming through. So we're not sure about his health, right? Same thing with the ownership. Uh, so we got to keep an eye on that, but you know, you could play a contrarian stack here with Gino DK and Tyler Lockett, get them at reduced ownership compared to say, I don't know, Philly, uh, or something like that. And, then run it back with a Deontay Foreman or run it back with a DJ Moore. You can stack the game if you want to play both Deontay Foreman and DJ Moore and, and hope there's just a, a pant load of points that squeezed out of here. I mean, there there's routes for, for teams to get here, uh, to get there here because Carolina's defense, um, they're, they're exploitable in, in pass game, right? So, uh, you know, we can really get there. Their pass offense is not very good. Um, but their pass defense is really kind of break even. They're pretty good on the ground. Uh, it's significantly above league average, but they still give up 135 yards a game. You know, they are, they, they really suppress in terms of yards per carry. It's just that they see a lot of carries. So, um, got to be aware of, of what the Seahawks are going to try and do, but they're a pass heavy offense. They're about a 55, 45 split. And, you know, they've been throwing the ball all season. So you can get to the passing game here. Geno has won slates, as I said. So um, Seahawks defense probably staying off of that at 36. Would rather play the Niners at 32. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. I think there are some some different stacks that we can get to. Um, but obviously, just play the obvious stuff um, for the most part. Play Minnesota-Detroit. Play some Philly. Play some Cincinnati. And... I think for the most part, you could probably uh, do pretty well just sticking to those three. Those are the three highest total games uh, on the on the day here. You could even play Dallas if you want to. Uh, but 
if you are building deeper tournament teams, trying to win a million dollars, I think this Carolina-Seattle game could pop a little bit. I think Pittsburgh could pop a little bit, maybe. Um, You could also see some sneaky nonsense go on in the Tennessee um, Jacksonville game. So, yeah. Also, don't totally fade the Jets up here. They they could win this game. They could they could definitely cover uh, a you know ten points. Um, you know that said, they they're likely to just get freaking blown out now. Um, so yeah, that's it, guys. Um, in the I guess take two or three or whatever it is, I, I managed to keep it right around an hour this time. Um, so that's it. You can play pretty much everybody. And as always, uh, it's a good tournament week. So keep an eye on projections. Uh, we'll have updates as some more injury news and, and whatnot fleshes out throughout the next couple of days. Um, and we'll push, you know, models don't typically adjust until, you know, the Friday type of stuff anyway. So uh, look forward to that. Um, and outside of that, uh, good luck, everybody. <laughs>